Hey folks, this is IOE Thermal back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is a Brazos and his Moss is a, t a tier 10 game on Minsk. And if I'm stumbling over my words, it's only because I don't want to do this intro one more time. I uh, I keep messing this up and then redoing it and, and I'm just done. <laughs> this, this is the one sticking. I don't care anymore. Um, and so he's running chocolate. Um... He is platooned up with Dom Zor Do Dom Domzor. Whatever. He's he's platooned up with a friend. We're just gonna go on D for for this. Uh, and and D is going like complete opposite direction, so we're probably not gonna see him again for the rest of this game. Uh, this is of course one of the infamous actually it probably is the infamous uh, German <laughs> tier 10 heavy tank it is legendary it's been in the game since forever um, I have uh, as long as I've played this game this tank has been in it and I have played since back uh, just after the T30 became uh, a tier 9 since uh, the T30 used to be the tier 10 heavy and just after that I stopped being a thing is when I started playing so even way back in the dawn of time, this thing was always beautiful and awesome, and a little bit overpowered. And um, and then the meta switched completely, and it just became useless. Um, and now it's a little bit in the middle, and it depends on whether or not you ha have any idea how to use it, or you know like to kill innocent columns as you shoot IS sevens in the side. That was a nice shot. Um, I don't understand why nobody shot us as we did that. You know, there's the whole enemy team right in front of us. And um, apparently none of them decided that we were shooting at. Okay, I mean, that, that's perfectly fine by us. For us, is perfectly fine accepting that. He's going to get shot in the side because of the way he's angling. It shouldn't do anything at all. It doesn't. Just ricochets off his beautiful armor and lets him advance. And now that it's his turn to fire, he can go down and, ooh, yep, unfortunately, because of the way of how far out he had to come, he does get one shot straight through his side, but only mean, we'll take a little bit of damage trade for a little bit of damage kind of thing, um, though it would have been nice had that shot been taken and landed, um, no, you don't always get to, you know, do that. So it looks like there's... Where's this guy, anyway? As the IS-7 puts one in the side of our turret, we put one in the side of his turret. Was I right about the side of the turret? I was. Look at that. Um, so if Burrows wants to continue putting shots in the side of enemy monster turrets, he's going to have to do it from way back here, with where he's not actually exposed. Uh, if this guy could just kindly... We gotta shoot him in the side, that'd be great, and thank you, good sir. Ooh, he turned back at the last second, and so that shot actually bounced instead of going in like it was supposed to. And because he is now aiming for us, uh, we're gonna have to be a little bit more cautious with this. This is maybe some time to go... Wait, do you already have the gold going? Yes, you do. Huh. For some reason, I thought this tank got heat, and it wasn't until I actually looked down at what was in his number two position that I went, wait a second, well, that doesn't look right. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know why I thought this thing fired heat, probably because I've never actually played it. Uh, I have battled them many a time, I have killed them in everything from white tank to heavy, but I've never played one. And it does look like a fun kind of tank. So I may eventually, but I probably won't. <laughs> uh, he's decided that this location is no longer worth it. But I don't think he's going to be able to get out of it as easily as he wants to. Um, now, if this other heavy were to push past him, they could probably draw some fire and he could probably get past. Looking for the Kapoa on that Yagzilla doesn't find it. And the E100 is hopefully going to start drawing a little bit of fire. And letting us slide on through the other side. Or at least get away from him. Good lord. 
Uh, Action X doing like the stupidest thing I've ever seen Action X do. It's popping in front of all the enemy heavy tanks, uh, which is of course all of our friendly tanks. And it's just assuming it's not going to get shot, which is dumb because of course it's going to get shot. What else are they going to shoot at? There's nothing else to see it from this angle in this position. So of course they're going to shoot at the giant target of Moron right up there. Um, Action X falling back because obviously the, you know, the bit he took uh, was too much for him to handle and he is running away from the kitchen. Nice shot into the egg cell. I almost thought that was going to bounce, but uh, the egg cell didn't angle back in time and so it did in fact just, you know, <laughs> do the damage we wanted it to do. We really got to be careful about over angling towards the egg cell. Uh, it doesn't matter though, the exile takes out a column instead of taking out us. And that was unfortunate. The uh, the the way the whole tank changed and the armor profile changed as he hit the brakes and the back jumped up for a second was just enough to bounce our shot into oblivion. Um, D is doing well on the other side of the map. Oh, so close to taking the track off and doing damage. And it looks like our type five has died. Uh, right beside somehow. I don't I don't get it. How did you manage to lose a type five in that situation? I don't know. But apparently we did. E5 is now gonna push up on us because it thinks it's got the stuff. Unfortunately for it, we we don't. It, it does not have the stuff. We have the stuff. Um, okay, I mean, we'll take that free shot, right? Free kill is a good kill. I'm never going to turn that down. Um, why there was an IS-4 in that position, I don't know. I can't answer you uh, things that, you know, of that level of stupid. Because I would never do that level of stupid. Well, not now, anyway. <laughs> Back when I first started playing the game, different story. But I assume that goes for everybody. Though maybe I'm just special. As he blows away the E5 for 300 damage. Now, the other friendly moss has decided that he can actually push these dead tanks around as barricades. I don't think that's a good plan. They're going to get stuck in a really dumb position. And then next thing you know, you're going to have to spend most of the game just trying to get uh, yourselves back out of that position. Uh, I thought these were friendly tanks over here, but obviously they're not. They're, in fact, all of them are enemy tanks. And he's got two Yagzillas right here to contend with. Uh, he's going to have issues. Um, thankfully, he does have some backup. But he's still going to have issues. Um, the Yagzillas, unless they fire and miss or bounce, um, you know, you can only get hit by a couple of them. Good job pulling it far enough. Uh, to take the shot, but not far enough to get yourself shot in return, as all the BLC is scra side scraping inside the tank. Um, well, that is friendly taking that one out, and you just gotta worry about that one. Who fires and bounces? Did he hit us? He hit us right in the gun mantle. I mean, we'll take that every time, right? I mean, Yagzilla to the gun mantle doesn't hurt nearly as badly as Yagzilla to the side, or Yagzilla to the side of head. Right? Uh, 57 Heavy is panicking a little bit. There's no way he can be uh, just thinking about firing straight into us. It's never going to turn out the way he wants it to. And after him expending his entire clip, he should be really running, but he's not running yet, and it, it cost him his life. Um, and yes, for anybody who noticed, I did in fact jump right there. And no, I don't know why. Nice job. Oh, I thought he'd actually take the tracks off the 140. He did not. And so he just got some awesome damage in, and he's going to ride around behind this thing and finish it off for the victory. Nope, there's still two enemy tanks left. I forgot about that. He's on six kills. His, his buddy is on seventh. Um, yes, that's that's great. <laughs> we just trolled our team by accident. Um, there is the moss. Uh, we're not going to get a shot from back here. So I'm just going to speed it up because, of course, this thing will take forever and a day to get anywhere. Um, come on. Give him what's for, Object 140. 
That deck should be able to win this duel hands down. No question asked. Assuming that the monster doesn't track him on the way on his way in. And assuming it's not in the error corridor that they're fighting in. Now there was a 113, but it got Yagzillid, I'm pretty sure. And so it's out of the game now. And there Nope! That's the wrong tank going down. We still have an enemy moss on the board. Uh, it seems to be making a bit of a break for it. Um, is it going to come out and play? Because right, I think the answer is no. Well, nope, that is the end of the game. Only doing 7,000 damage that game. How sad. Ace Tanker, Bruiser, Duelist, Fire for Effect, Shellproof, Steel Wall, High Caliber, Top Gun, and 34 bombs. That is impressive. 113,000 credits in a tier 10 is also very impressive. 1,500 base experience. That might be the highest on the channel to date. If not, it's very close. Uh, unfortunately, Uga starts, you know, he lost all those credits because of the fact that he, <laughs> as much as he made a lot, he spent a ton in ammo and more in uh, cr uh, consumables, and so he just ended up losing a ton of, of money. But he made some nice experience, so that I guess it's a decent trade-off. Overall, would I do this again? Yes. This was a great game. <laughs> he blocked 5,000 damage. Well done, sir. Thank you so much for saying this, and I can't wait to see your next one. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day this IOE throughout.